All right, part two of soft structure series, and this is going to be a good one. And that is because we're going to cover the engine that drives everything related to shorebound fluking, which is long shore drifts. I'm no expert in ocean geography, but I grew to realize how little I understood it. And that is why it's so important to grasp it if you want to become a better shorebound fluke angler. Remember the three pillars I mentioned earlier? Gear, technique, and the ability to find fluke? We're focusing on the last thing, which is the most understated and probably the most important at the state of my fluke and tenure. Why is that? For the first few years, I've upped my gear and I honed my technique while fishing similar waters over and over again. And I've become pretty good at it. But just like a great athlete who relies on sheer talent, say Luca, you eventually hit a ceiling. And to break through that ceiling or to become a champion at the sport, you will need to be challenged over and over again. So I took it on myself to know not just the how, but the why in finding fluke. And to become a complete angler, I needed to figure this shiz out by myself. That is because when you do figure it all out, it will not only make you better at finding them, but by doing so, you will also up your technique and your gear selection to best suit the new places and conditions you fish. It's win-win. And that is why you will never find me asking where you fish because I simply do not care and it does not make me a better angler. And you should feel the same way too. If you really want to grow in this sport, you need to challenge yourself by first building a basic understanding of the geography around the places you fish. And hopefully in due time, you'll be fully integrated into the fluke environment, living and breathing it like Bill Paxton in the original Twister. And to get you started, here is my dry college take on the subject of longshore drifts, the foundation of finding fluke. So what is longshore drift and what drives it? By definition, longshore drift is a geological process that consists of the transportation of sediments, clay, silt, pebble, sand, shingle, and shells, along coasts parallel to the shoreline, which is dependent on the angle of incoming wave direction. Simply put, when waves ride up the coastline in a diagonal fashion, they push and pull sediment up the coastline in a zigzag pattern. This diagonal propagation of wave is a net result of hydrodynamic forces driven by prevailing winds that run parallel to the shoreline. And this is very important. Without this crucial physical interaction, you will be often left with amorphous shorelines that offer very little soft structure features for fluke to nestle in. When the ingredients are right for longshore drift, this is where things get pretty interesting. During these drifts, sediments such as sand, broken shells, and pebbles move up the coastline like a giant parade. This parading of sediment will continue to move until it finds a reason to congregate. And these reasons can span from man-made obstructions to natural obstructions, high density formation of shoreline, curvatures of the beach, river currents, so on and so forth. The rendezvous of sediment in the obstruction is what makes things really interesting, both at a macro and a micro level. One macro example is a hook or spit. Spits frequently form where the coast abruptly changes direction and often occur across mouths of estuaries. From a micro level example, an inflection point or bend in the shoreline, whether man made or naturally made, can lead to the buildup of sediment on the leeward side, often forming a sandbar that separates the trough behind it and the ocean. Another example of sediment buildup is around man made obstructions that often stretch into the ocean via jetties, sewage pipes, or piers. The sediment will tend to build up on the non leeward side obstruction while a deeper pool will form on the leeward side where it's free from the sediment deposition. To wrap this up, why is this important to you? Longshore drifts provide soft structure for ecosystems large and wide to develop along the shoreline, stemming from creations of major troughs, lagoons, to land vegetation from spit formation. Remember, fluke love edges. If Ron Burgundy was a fluke, he would say, I love edges, edgity edges edges. Soft structures are one of the keys to creating such edges, convincing prize worthy fluke 
to congregate and set up their points of ambush on trap prey. The more edges, the better. I know this spring has been battered with strong southerly winds that make it incredibly challenging to fish along the eastern coastline. But just remember, this nuisance is also the secret sauce that forms an incredible, diverse fluke habitat across our entire tri-state coastline. There is nowhere else on this God-given planet to provide this arena for our coveted sport. Alright, enjoy the video. I'm going to let some random footage run out. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this content. Yeah. You see how I like back up on that hook yeah, set? Yeah. yeah. I because like, I feel like uh, I feel like either though. I like watch you. I'm like, oh, okay, that's definitely a fire. Right. Like, Man, that's like... Yeah. 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 Again, this is probably a little short, but again, just make sure make every flu count coming down. Oh, actually, uh, uh, you know. No, it's a short. It's a short. It's a short. Yeah, I think it's a short. Nice. That looks decent. Oh, oh, let it run. Let it run. Let it run. Yeah, just nice and easy. This one looks a decent, real decent. That might be the one you lost. Hopefully. Yes, it. Oh, nice. A little shorter than that. Yeah. Still, that's, that's beautiful, man. Let me get that for you. Thank you. Beautiful. Oh, I look at that, that color. Look at that color on that. Oh, that's awesome. Bronzing, man. Look how thick that is. Okay, that's a fat blue. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Good job on that. Thank you. I like how you how you fought it. Oh, good Constant job. pressure. Thank you. One more time. One more. Yeah. One more. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Beautiful, man. Here, I'll hold Thank on to the rod. Yeah. Beautiful color. 
That might not be the one that you lost. It could be another one, you know? Oh, I think so. The other yeah. ones fall a lot harder. Yeah, really? Okay, yeah. So, there you go.